Hey everyone, Aha Cove here. Today I'll be giving our computer the ability to count Legos using computer vision. The primary tool that we'll be using today is OpenCV, a library of primarily image processing functions and algorithms to make our life a whole lot easier. It is also shared across many languages such as Java, C, C++, uh, even JavaScript now has a port of OpenCV, uh, but most importantly for this video, Python. In a later tutorial, we will also be going over C++, uh, accomplishing this same exact project, uh, but for now, we want to have a separation of concerns, not to overwhelm you all. But maybe you would like to see them in the same video, side by side, or something like that. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Also, before we get started, make sure you have OpenCV already installed, because we will not be going over that process, in this video at least. Uh, in a future series, we will be taking it from the beginning stage, going through the whole installation process and everything like that. Uh, but for now, make sure it's installed. <laughs> so what's the goal of what we're trying to accomplish? We will have a picture with a set amount of Lego blocks, and we will hope to have our computer be able to count each and every one of them inside the image. Now, how do we choose which algorithm or function to use in OpenCV? Well, I made it easy for you all. We're going to start with a simple one called Blob Detector. OpenCV has a built-in function called Simple Blob Detector, and that's what we'll be using today. How blob detection works is that it finds a group of pixels that share a similar characteristic or are connected together in an image or frame. There are a handful of parameters that we can pass through OpenCV's simple blob detector function, but today hopefully we won't have to use that since we have a set image and it's a clean, clear, white background, so we don't have to really worry about much. And you can download that image below in the GitHub link, uh, which also includes the code. We chose blob detection, but don't think that's the only way we can handle this task. There's things like image classifiers, template matching, feature matching, etc. Uh, in computer vision and computer science in general, we all know there's a plethora of ways to handle one task. But we have such a simple task today, why not try out this blob detector that I've heard so much about? Let's get started. The first thing that we'll do is we'll create an entry file and we'll name it main.py. The next step is importing CV2 which is the OpenCV Python library. And then we'll import NumPy and give it an alias name as NP. NumPy is a scientific computer Python library that helps us deal with arrays, lists, and vectors very easily. Our next step is to load in the image, as you can see here. I have included in GitHub. It's called 30-legos. So in our first parameter, we're gonna have cv2.im create, and our first parameter, we're gonna have the directory to the image. And in the second parameter, we're gonna give it the scale that we wanna load it in as. So it could be grayscale, it could be blue, green, or red, it could be HSV, and a few other ways to load it in. Now that we have our image loaded, I think we're ready to fire out this simple blob detector function that is built in OpenCV. Before we get started, there are now four versions of OpenCV. And so in OpenCV2, there was a different function name for Simple Blob Detector than it is for OpenCV3+. In OpenCV2, it was just Simple Blob Detector. And in OpenCV3 and 4, it is OpenCV Blob Detector underscore create. So just in case you are using OpenCV2 instead of OpenCV3 or 4, we are going to print out which version we're using, and we are going to load it accordingly. So here we go. I think we're ready. So we're going to assign a variable detector to cv2.simpleblobdetector underscore create. Let's make sure we fill in these comments though. So just in case, if you pull this up later on, or maybe someone gets across this and they don't see the video, um, let's just make sure we have the comments so it's easy to follow. So now we're gonna give the key point variable to detector.detect and pass in the image. If you notice above, we didn't actually throw in, we didn't actually pass in the image into the parameters. So this is actually where we're gonna load it in and detect at the actual blobs in the image. What the simple blob detector returns is a list of key points that have a X and Y position of where the center of the blob is found and the size of the blob. And believe it or not, that's pretty much it. I think we're ready to start visualizing what the code is actually doing. So we'll set an image key points variable that will be the image that is drawn on. 
we're going to use cv2.draw key points and in the first parameter we're going to pass in the image the second parameter is the key points that we found earlier in detector.detect the third parameter will be the temporary output of the image that we'll be drawing on and this is where numpy comes in handy so we initialize a numpy array the fourth parameter is the color of the circle of the blob that we found. The format that this takes is BGR format, which is blue, green, red. So we set 255 to the last parameter. That'll be red. So it'll just be a red circle. You'll see us using BGR format a lot in OpenCV. Or, and you'll also see us using this other format called HSV. The last parameter is just the flag of how we want the key points to be drawn. Now let's display what we found. So we're gonna have cv2.im show, and we're gonna pass in the title for what the window is gonna display. And then in the second parameter, we're gonna pass in the image that we want to be shown. And then we're gonna have cv2.wait key of zero. This means that the window won't close until we click a key. And then the last thing that we wanna run is cv2.destroy all windows, which cl will close our app and uh, free up the memory. So let's see what we have here. Oh, looking good, looking good. I don't see any circle that was missed. You can fact check me and check it manually, but actually let's print out the length of what we found from this key point list. So let's come back up to the line where we found the key points. And we're going to print a length of the key point. Since key points is just a list, we can just find the length of the key point list. And hey, looks like 30 Lego box for me. There's so much more to dig into blob detection. And of course, we've only scratched the surface of computer vision in general. So why don't you like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to follow me on this journey. You can also connect with me on Discord and Twitter to keep up with this computer vision journey of ours. Thank you. No, thank you.